Know the enemy and know yourself. In a hundred battles you will never be in peril. Darth Kermit here with my Keys to Kyber video series on Grand Arena Championships in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. In this series, I'll go over the strategies, practices, and tools that I use to make sure I get Kyber every time. This second video will be on analyzing your opponent and setting your defense. To quote Sun Tzu again, Know the enemy and know yourself. In a hundred battles, you will never be in peril. This is the principle behind this video. If you know your opponent's capabilities, in this case, what teams they can field, how good those teams are, and what those teams can do on offense and defense, and you know what teams you can field, how good your teams are, and what they can do on offense and defense, then you will be able to set the proper defense to cost your opponent banners while leaving the right teams for offense so that you can score more banners than your opponent. So the first thing we do is take a look at our opponent's roster. We can do this in-game by going into the GAC screen and tapping on the name of our current opponent. Then tap on Inventory and you can see their entire roster and equipped mods. Or we can look them up on swgoh.gg if they are registered there. Or we can use Hotbot, one of the tools in Hot Sauce's Hot Utils suite that I mentioned in the previous video. While most of this suite requires subscribing on Patreon, Hotbot will provide everyone one free comparison every 24 hours, and it's a great comparison feature. It starts by comparing your respective guilds, then your GAC history, which tells you very quickly whether or not you're going up against a good player. If your best score is decently higher than your opponent's best score, then it will probably be an easy fight and you can try to eke out some of the more difficult feats instead of worrying too much about eking out a close win. The next section is a general comparison of your rosters. The most important sections here are number of Zetas, average speed bonus from mods for your gear 12 plus characters in your top 80 characters, and number of gear 13 characters. The next section is a mod comparison that will show who has mod advantages for both speed and offense. Then a comparison of relic levels on all characters. And now the most important bit, the comparison of specific characters starting with the current meta characters. So this shows you at a glance which meta characters your opponent has and what their current stats are. You can also have a personal list, like here I have Treya, Scion, and Wampa which shows me very quickly whether or not certain teams are worth throwing on defense. Then a list of key characters like Thrawn and Watt who can comprise very specific counters. So this will show you very quickly if your opponent is capable of certain counters. And last in this section is key ships like Negotiator and Malevolence. And the last section of the comparison displays each player's fastest mods and fastest characters. If you want to try out Hotbot for yourself, you can find it on my Discord server. See the link in the description. Okay, so we have a ton of information on our opponent and ourselves. What do we do with it? Well, we need to take that information and use it to construct a defense, such that no matter what our opponent does, we have a path to victory. To do this, we first need to make sure that we have a counter available for any team that our opponent can put on defense. Once that's accomplished, we want to see if we have any defensive teams that our opponent can't beat. And if not, we want to pick our remaining teams that will cost banners or at least can't be soloed. Sounds easy, right? Okay, so yeah, all that's the trick, isn't it? Well, it's really not that bad. Take a look at all of your opponent's solid teams. Gas, Night Sisters, Jedi, Sith Empire, etc. Then set aside your lowest counter that you are confident you can win with for each of them. Familiarize yourself with all the counters out there. SWGOH.GG has an entire GAC counters section. See what your opponent has, look those teams up, and see what you have to counter them. Then set aside your lowest consistent counter and move on to the next team till you're confident that you can beat any team they put on defense. Now, this should leave you with a couple good meta teams and a few decent defensive teams. If you don't have at least one meta team left, then you need to really dig deeper into the counter teams. There's plenty of ways out there to consistently beat meta teams with non-meta teams. Start learning and practicing those matchups so you have some meta teams left to put on defense or to get high banners. Okay, so we have a couple meta teams left plus a bunch of other random teams that we don't need as counters. Now we need to consider placement. The first thing to look at is whether or not ships are part of the GAC. As of now, it seems like ships will be present for all GACs from here on out, but that may change and it affects placement, so keep that in mind. If ships are part of your current GAC, then depending on your division, you will need to be able to field at least two or four fleets, 
one or two on defense, and one or two on offense. The way fleets currently work, some fleets are good on offense and terrible on defense, so keep those fleets for offense and learn how to use them to take down meta fleets. Regardless, make sure you have one or two fleets set aside that can take out your opponent's best one or two fleets, then put your best remaining one or two defensive fleets on defense. Next, you need to determine whether or not your defensive fleets can hold against your opponent or at least cost them a significant number of banners. This is actually fairly common. A lot of players ignored fleet for a very long time and they are now at a huge disadvantage in GAC. If you don't think your fleets can hold or cost your opponent many banners, then you want to go ahead and place your remaining meta teams and best defensive teams in the territory in front of the ship's territory in order to try to deny those banners to your opponent. Alternatively, if you have a team that you think your opponent can't beat, then place that team in that territory with a few lesser defensive teams. This is all because ships' territories currently tend to be higher value than the other back row territory. On top of that, ship battles tend to be more guaranteed high banner wins. This may change in the future. Now, if you're confident in your fleets over your opponents, then you have a few more options. If you have a pretty comparable matchup or you outclass your opponent, go ahead and put your best remaining teams in the other front row territory, not in front of the ship's territory. Put your next best teams behind them, and then fill in the territory in front of ships. If your opponent outclasses you significantly, then my preferred strategy is to leave my best remaining team on the back row with my worst teams, then my next best teams in front of them. Then the next best teams left in front of the fleet territory. I hope that made sense. If not, see the diagram on screen. The goal here is to hopefully have your opponent use up the counters they would need to beat your best team on the front row and end up not being able to clear your back row. This probably won't work against a skilled opponent, but when you're really outclassed, you don't have much choice but to hope your opponent becomes overconfident and makes a mistake. Okay, so we've learned about our opponent and about ourselves, and we've crafted the best defense we can. Tomorrow we'll get to see how well we did, which I'll cover in a video on offensive strategy, counters, and maximizing banners. If you enjoy these videos or at least find them helpful, please like, share, and subscribe, and support me on Patreon if you think I deserve it. Till next time. I find your lack of rainbow connection disturbing.